A little known secret about me is that I kind of love the Nintendo Switch. Ever since its release, I have bought every cool, weird, and quirky Nintendo Switch thing I have seen. At least the cool, quirky, and weird things that appealed to me. I also went a little bit crazy buying as many cool games as I could find. <laughs> and they always sit here behind me in my videos and up and around my game collection, and a lot of you have always wanted me to do a Switch collection video. And I've always put it off because there is so much stuff that I never even wanted to tackle it. But you know what? I'm in the mood for some Switch bragging. Let's go through my entire Nintendo Switch collection. The focus here is going to be on the really cool Nintendo Switch collectible side of it. Specifically, really cool collector's editions for Switch video games or Switch games that were really hard to buy, ones that were only released on certain websites at certain times. Also, I didn't know how much of a stretch a Nintendo Switch collectible was, like this really awesome Breath of the Wild bow. I decided things like this yeah, probably don't qualify for this video as awesome as it is. I still found a way to sneak it into the video though. So this is my, in my opinion, kind of crazy, kind of insane Nintendo Switch collection. And I'll leave links to everything down below in case you see something you like that you might want to pick up. I want to start with something that means a lot to me and that's my Bayonetta Climax Edition. The reason this means so much to me is because it was gifted to me by a fan of the show. It just means so much to me and I love it. So the reason this Bayonetta Climax Edition is so cool to me is because for starters, I love the Bayonetta game are some of my favorite games of all time. I love that Nintendo saved the franchise and now they're continuing the franchise by making new games, but there was no other way to get the first game on Switch physical other than buying it in this pack. So yeah, as you can see here, we have both of the games sealed. <laughs> Bayonetta 2 all on its own and Bayonetta 1 all on its own. There's also a still book in here as well as a bunch of other goodies. And I just think this is one of the prettiest items I have in my collection, period. As you would have seen at the start of the video, we also have this Let's Go Eevee Pokemon Switch. Now, I don't buy all the special Switch editions. I would have loved to have got the Smash Brothers Switch. I would have loved to even have had things like the Diablo Switch, even though I'm not a huge fan of Diablo, but they're hundreds of dollars. I'm not made of money. The reason I have the Let's Go Eevee version is because I brought it for my fiance Kim. So I happily bought this for her as an early Christmas present. I made sure to get the Eevee one because Eevee's my favorite as well as her preferred favorite over Pikachu and Eevee. But so that we could trade the Pokemon with each other and complete our Pokedexes, I also bought a Let's Go Pikachu separately and I made her play this one. But she ended up being happy that she did because she loves her Pikachu. Now I want to highlight a few of these standard edition Switch games here because these are games that you couldn't just go out and buy in store. At least I don't think so from what I've been told and what I researched anyway I might be wrong and you can let me know down below the first one was the longest five minutes and retro city rampage Both of these were sold exclusively online on websites I actually found them at too many games a retro video game convention where of course a reseller was selling them But I got them at a good price and both of these are really cool games I already have them digitally downloaded on my switch So of course they're staying sealed the lost fear is the same you could only buy it through Square Enix's website I'm not sure if you can see still buy it, but I know they sold out after I pre-ordered the game. And Lost Fear is actually the spiritual successor of I Am Setsuna, which you could only get a physical of from Japan. And it was the exact same situation with Okami HD, which you might realize is missing here. I ordered it from Japan over a month ago and I still haven't got it. And then Broken Sword 5. I actually ordered this one while I was looking up games for my eShop video, and I saw that it only had a European physical release, so I went ahead and grabbed it, and it actually came in the mail recently. I honestly don't know that much about it, other than the fact that it's a point and click, and I love point and click so I was happy to buy it and one day when I have time I'll play it. Now here I'm breaking my rules a little bit but I think these are way too cool not to include and again both of these were from fans so I really wanted to put them in this video. This is the Breath of the Wild original soundtrack. Now if you want to find out more about either of these items I'll leave links down below on someone who's done a breakdown, someone who actually had time to review it and talk about it because they're really freaking cool but this right here has five CDs containing every single song from Breath of the Wild. There's also more goodies inside so if you want to see that breakdown I'll leave that below. Same goes for this bad boy. This is creating a champion edition of Breath of the Wild and it has an actual yes a real working spirit orb inside as well as a map of Hyrule and this huge book 
containing everything that went into creating the actual game of Breath of the Wild. So between these two, I have how to create the game and the music that was in the game. Now, getting my hands on the Octopath Traveler Wayfarer's Edition was a collaborative effort between me and Twitter. I didn't realize how much I was gonna love Octopath Traveler until I started playing it, and I immediately realized my mistake on not picking this up. Spawnwave actually did a really great video on it. He's a good friend of mine, and I recommend checking out his channel in general, but he broke down the Collector's Edition, and I have an open mind yet, so that's where you're gonna have to go and see his. Since I already had bought the game physically prior to this, I didn't feel the need to open it yet. I can be one of those people sometimes. But inside it has a pop-up book which features some of the areas of the game and both the pop-up book and the areas they represent in the game are absolutely gorgeous. Of course it also comes with a map and the sound selection CD and this game in my opinion should have won game of the year for best music because the soundtrack was incredible. Oh yeah and the collaborative effort I was talking about was I reached out to Twitter and asked anyone if they managed to buy a copy they didn't want and it turned out that someone actually had a spare copy. They had bought two to make sure and they sold me theirs for what they had paid plus shipping. Oh, and I managed to nab one of these from GameStop when I bought my game. It's got a game-inspired character card and sticker set inside. I don't dare open it because I know once I do, it'll just be loose around the house. I have that issue with the limited run little cards they send out. And we'll talk about limited run next. I guess that's a perfect segue, but I don't know what to do with these. So limited run, as I mentioned before, with each one of their releases, they send you little trading cards, which are actually really cool in quality. But let's talk about the actual releases themselves. The only one I have loose here and not in a collector's edition is Saturday Morning RPG. You'll notice, again, with all of these, everyone is sealed. And my reason for that is I buy so many of these games for my eShop videos digitally. So we have Night Trap in this big old box. This is a game that you wouldn't ever think would come to Nintendo. Like, five, ten years ago, you would not think this would be possible. So it's really cool seeing it on Switch. Kingdom New Lands. I gotta be honest, this is the most recent one I was shipped and I still know nothing about this game. <laughs> I, I, at this point, I'm just buying everything limited run because every game they've released is one that I've liked and I've played and I've enjoyed and I wanted to get physical. So now when this, when I got to this, I was like, well, I kinda, I kinda gotta get that. Slime Sand, this box looks really cool. I liked this game. I didn't love this game. It wasn't one of my eShop videos. I wasn't expecting a physical of it at all, but it's one that looks really nice. The big yellow box definitely stands out on the shelf. And then my favorite, Thimbleweed Park. I actually bought this one from limited run, just loose, not the collector's edition, just the game. And then a couple weeks later, I got this in the mail from one of my Patreons, Corey. So I ended up doing a giveaway for my other copy and I no longer have it. And thanks to Corey, I have this. And of course, it's sealed because I played the game to death from the eShop. But this is my favorite limited run game. Back before Limited Run even announced they were going to make Switch games, I made a video about if they did, what games would I want, and this was number one. So they listened, thank you Doug, and I could not be happier with my with my Thimbleweed Park physical. It's amazing. This game is great. But Limited Run Games isn't the only company doing amazing work bringing eShop games to a physical platform. Super Rare Games is another one of my favorites. In fact, I adore Super Rare Games. They are such amazing, nice, generous people. I have all eight of their releases so far, starting with Human Full Flat, The Flame in the Flood, which is might be my second favorite one, I think, from them. I love that game. Shelter Generations, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. This one looks awesome on the shelf. I love the way that game looks. Mutant Muds, another really cool game. And then we have Worms. If you haven't played this, Worms, it's probably the best Worms ever. Snake Pass is my number one favorite, an adorably charming little platformer from early in the eShop's lifespan. And I was so glad to finally get that physical years later. And N++, a game that has a huge cult following. My roommate used to play this all the time. So make sure to check out both Limited Run games and super rare games because some of your favorite eShop games might already have physical releases. Now, I gotta give a shout out to our game collecting on Reddit. I was browsing Reddit one day and a user posted a picture of their Undertale Collector's Edition and I said, oh boy, I didn't know this existed and I need to get my hands on that. I knew there was a standard physical edition for Undertale in Best Buy that you couldn't get anywhere else, but I had no idea there was a collector's edition and this thing is freaking awesome. But thanks to our game collecting, check out the subreddit because you find some really cool stuff on there. Let's go through some smaller but still awesome Switch collector's editions. I actually really enjoy LEGO games. There was a while where I was trying to collect all of them. That kind of fell through, but I still pick up the new ones. And LEGO DC Villains is actually really fun. And I strolled into GameStop one day and I saw this big collector's edition which came with a steelbook case. It also has a little LEGO Lex Luthor minifigure inside. And I just thought it looked really adorable.
purple and the colors popped, so I wanted to have it in my collection. Fire Emblem Warriors, another gift from a fan. If you haven't played this game, it's great. It's like Hyrule Warriors or Dynasty Warriors, where you just hack and slash through hundreds of enemies as your favorite Fire Emblem characters. It might tide you over while you wait for that 2019 Fire Emblem core title to come out. This pack contains a Fire Emblem Warrior card set, a Fire Emblem poster, and a set of all the Fire Emblem Warriors music. Flashback 25th anniversary. I actually had flashback when I was a kid So it's really cool that this comes with a Super Nintendo card of flashback. However, it's obviously a fake It doesn't do anything. It's just a metal case, but still this is a really awesome looking little collector's edition Sonic Mania Plus this is pretty standard I think you can still get this for like 30 bucks But I, I still love it though It comes with an art book and a reversible cover and I, I just love the game so much Shining Residence Refrain again I have this game downloaded digitally so when I saw it for like 30 bucks on I think it was like $24.99 on sale. I had to pick it up. It's a really cool looking case. The game's okay. It's 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 not amazing. It's okay. It's pretty good actually. I'll, I'll, I'll bump it up to pretty good. Axiom Verge is freaking sweet and so is this collector's edition. And finally, Wild Guns Reloaded. Again, this isn't one that's hard to find. Initially when I bought it, it was. It was a GameStop exclusive release and you couldn't find it for weeks after it was released. And I don't know if they started re-releasing them or people started trading them back in, but now you can find them fairly commonly. I just love that this game got a physical re-release. It's such a cool game. Look, I'm gonna throw my Starlink on this list because I just think it's the coolest thing. I almost have a complete collection of all the ships and characters. I'm waiting until they go on sale, which I'm expecting they will eventually do. It's kind of Switch, but not Switch. I know it's another systems, but obviously this pack with Star Fox was exclusive to Nintendo Switch. If you want to know more about the game, I'll leave my review down below. I just, I had to include this. Yeah, I don't think we need to really go in to Labo. I mean, I have it. I don't have the newest Labo. And the reason why I don't have the newest one is because this is kind of what happened to my old Labo. Like, some of it is in here. When my house flooded, a lot of it got ruined. A lot of it got trampled when I was trying to scoot things off the game room floor to get away from the flooding. Of course, a lot of the lighter things got damaged, like my Nintendo Labo. It's not a bad product, but I'm definitely not buying any more of it. <laughs> it's really cool in concept, and there is a place for it in some people's homes. Eh, it's not my home. <laughs> Little Dragon's Cafe actually had a collector's edition that I only ever saw on Amazon that has this little dragony guy and he looks kind of derpy. The actual dragon in the game is really cute, whereas this guy is kind of derpy cute. But honestly, I, I still love him. He's charming. He's charmingly derpy. And I'll leave my review of the game down below as well. It was in a bigger video where I went through a bunch of Switch games worth buying because I do think it's a really adorable game. Definitely suited for a younger audience. But if you liked Harvest Moon or if you're just in for a really chill and calm experience, Little Dragon's Dragon's Cafe is a pretty fun and cute game. This was actually one of the first collector's editions I got for the Switch, and it's by far one of the coolest. Obviously, it's for Sonic Mania. It comes with this really awesome figure of Sonic sat on an old school Genesis that doesn't actually work. For some reason, mine rattles. It's always done that. <laughs> yeah, it's painful. <laughs> And inside they even made a Genesis cart that again doesn't work, but you pull out the cartridge in the middle and there's a pretty cool gold ring inside. The only thing that bummed me out about this at the time was that it didn't have a physical release inside, but then that came later. Also ignore the different shirt and weird lights behind me. Okay, thanks. If you watched my most recent fan mail unboxing video, you would have seen that someone sent me this amazing limited edition Owlboy collection, and I gotta be honest, I still don't know what's in it. It hasn't been that long since I filmed that video, and I haven't had time to look up what's in it, and I still don't know if I want to open it. Because as you'll see, I have it physically loose, and I've already played that, and there's just that part of me that doesn't want to open this, <laughs> but how cool does the box look? I'll have up on the screen someone unboxing it, or at least what's on the inside, but this thing just looks so cool. I love it. They're kind of accessories, but I, they count, right? <laughs> For me, with GameCube being one of my favorite systems of all time, this is just really cool. Having this Smash badge right here front and center of the GameCube controller. And speaking of Smash controllers, I actually ordered this and I completely forgot. Kind of why I hate pre-ordering things sometimes. But it comes with a steelbook case and a pro controller that is really 
freaking cool looking. Of course, I already have a pro controller and I already have the game, so there's no need to open this. <laughs> I will say though that like a day or two ago, I looked this up on Amazon and it's going for like 400 now. I paid 140. Not that that matters, but good thing I bought it, I guess. <laughs> and the final kind of big Switch collector's item I have was I actually got this on Black Friday. It wasn't any cheaper. I was just in Best Buy and I saw it on the shelf and I had no idea this existed. It's Hollow Knight for Switch. Unfortunately, it's just a digital code. I don't know why you go through this much effort and not throw a physical in, but the bright side was it was only like 30, I think, which is still cheap for the game digitally in my opinion because the game is so great but it also comes with this awesome plushie that correct me if i'm wrong looks really nice in this box behind its plastic <laughs> no but really this box is really cool and for 30 bucks i mean i just had to i don't even plan on opening it up and using the code because i don't need to provided on receipt at point of sale okay well i threw away the game Apparently. Okay, we're about a week in the future right now because I didn't expect to get this much more cool Switch stuff for Christmas. First up, just moments ago, I filmed an unboxing video of all the fan mail I got for Christmas. You'll see that video in a couple of days. And a fan of the show sent me this, the Smash Brothers Ultimate Pack, which again comes with the GameCube controller and the GameCube port for Switch and the game. So I'm going to be giving away again for the second time a copy of Smash Brothers. Check those links down below. So in that first part, which you just saw, I actually missed Oceanhorn out of my limited run collection. And since then, my Mercenaries King and Flint Hook double pack finally came. Both of these games are great, and I love that they're both on the same pack. And also, I finally got my Oxen free. The cover up for this is holographic, and just, I mean, tell me you don't love it. Finally, this is how you know she's a keeper. I got all of this from Kim. Four more loose Switch games I didn't already have. Sultan Sanctuary, Yoma Wari, which I actually have never heard of before, but she said she loved the artwork on the back, so she grabbed it for me. Monster Boy, one that I really wanted to have physical and flipping death. And then two collector's things that she found me. Deathmark Limited Edition, a game I actually had my eye on. This comes with a CD soundtrack. Temporary tattoos, which are gonna make me look oh so cool. I've actually heard a lot of really great things about Deathmark. And then she found me a Toki Retro Collector Edition. I had no idea this existed. I had never seen this before. It actually comes with an arcade cabinet that you can build yourself. I love the artwork of this game, both in the game and then just the box itself. Oh, also, if you weren't already wishing that you had my fiance, she also bought me a Turbo Man doll. This has nothing to do with the Switch video. I just had to show this off somewhere. <laughs> One of our favorite Christmas movies. And I mean, come on. Okay, now I'm going to cut back to the old me and I'm going to go through all of my loose Switch games. Okay, knowing me, I have Switch games scattered around the house. In the spare room, in the bathroom, in the lounge room, in the bedroom. Who knows? I've done my best to walk around my house and see if I have any missing. And now I think about it. Now I've said bedroom, Moonlight is in the bedroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all of these games on camera as I'm talking, but I'm just going to highlight a few that I either really enjoy or I think are underrated. I'm going to skip over the obvious ones like your Mario's and your Zelda's. So this is every single Switch game I have, I think. It's most of them. All right, let's go. Dead Cell is one of my favorite Switch games. Obviously, I made a whole video about how I was addicted to it. My Riding Stables, uh, the <laughs> Katamari. Actually, I played that on my second channel recently. I'm hoping I get to review it pretty soon, but if you want to check out my gameplay of it, make sure to go to those gamer guys on YouTube. There is so much content on that channel right now. But yeah, Katamari was really fun. Perfect addition to the Switch library. Camera's a little bit wonky, but I'll forgive it. My Heroes 1's Justice. This game actually works really well on the Switch and is a ton of fun. Loading screens are a little crazy, but I was pleasantly surprised by how fun this fighter is. Oh, Bendy and the Ink Machine, probably worth noting that's a GameStop exclusive and a little bit hard to find now. Games like Rocket League and Fortnite, okay. So Fortnite I bought just to have it in the collection. I do enjoy me some Fortnite, although having said that, I haven't played it in a long time. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of over the craze just like most people are. And Rocket League I bought purely because it was cheap on Black Friday, but I do have that one digitally as well. Lego City Undercover. I actually bought this one off Crate Stop in Canada and I had to go all the way to downtown Vancouver. It took me 40 minutes and I met a random guy in a Starbucks because <laughs> he, he was selling it so cheap at the time. It was like 15 bucks when it was retailing for like 40. And I was like, why don't you want it? And he said, it just kind of sucks. I was like, okay, that's fair. I like it though. Moonlighter is one I want to review soon. Absolutely fantastic. Having so much fun with it. Sleep Tight is actually an empty case. Uh, the developers of that game, We Are Fuzzy, they just mocked up this case, which is really nice. 
nice of them. Yonder is a really neat game. It reminds me of Breath of the Wild, but there's no fighting, there's no battling mechanics. It's more about just exploring. It's just a really charming and beautiful game, and I do recommend it. Well, guys, as my Switch installs an update, you have now seen everything in my physical Nintendo Switch collection. Now that I think about it, I actually have a ton more games on my Switch that I don't have physical yet, as well as games that didn't even get physical releases. So maybe if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see what I have actually on my Switch and what I've been playing recently, then let me know down below you'd want to see that. And while you're heading down there anyway, make sure you have fun all over that subscribe button. Click or tap on this video right here because it also features some of the games I talked about today. Let me go and open some of these collector's editions. Yeah, not really. Who am I kidding?